Welcome back. I am Madame Armadi, and this is 30 Days of Thoreau. Well, I hope you guys are having a good week, and it's been a, an eventful last 24 hours for me. Some high highs and low lows. On one hand, I had the launch of my book, Everyday Crystal Rituals, and I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am just in the amount of feedback that I've already gotten from that announcement is so amazing. And um, on the other hand, my computer crashed, lots of technical difficulties. Fortunately, all of that's getting sorted out, but that's why the video went out late yesterday. It might be going out late today, but nothing's gonna stop this train. So today we're gonna be opening up a deck, and there's very few decks that I would connect with enough that I need to actually buy more than one copy, and this just happens to be one of them. And it also is connected to a place in the world, which I have been to a few different times, and it's just a magical, magical city that I feel such a connection with, and that is the city of Prague. So the old capital of Bohemia, now of course the Czech Republic, and just such a rich history from the time of the alchemists and the gold makers on the Golden Row, to the birthplace of Alphonse Mucha and the Gothic castle, just such an amazing place. It's a land of art and mystery. The Vatlava River runs through it, which is also called the Moldava River. And that Moldava is where we get the name for Moldavite. So a crystal that if you would like to learn more about, you can check out in my book. But, but today I want to share with you this deck, which is called the Tarot of Prague. And it comes from the design studio Baba Studios, which is based in the center of Prague and run by Karen Mahoney and her partner Alex Yukolov. Now I've shared a deck from Baba Studios before, the Spiritus Mundi, which happened to be the very first deck they ever put out. It was kind of an interesting art statement deck, a collaborative piece, and not really representative of what the decks are that you would think of Baba Studios releasing these days. They put out just these amazing beautiful fine art decks, very, very limited edition, very, very coveted. As soon as a deck goes up for release, it's usually sold out within hours. They build up a ton of anticipation and then they just uh, really, really limit their runs. So they're well known for the Romantic Victorian. They have an Alice in Wonderland deck, which actually is still available. They also released this oracle that was called the Mythical Creatures. And I have been trying to get my hands on one of those for a while, but they, there are none to be found. But they supposedly will be re-releasing that deck in a full color version in either the beginning of next year or hopefully sometime soon. So that is a website, uh, the Baba Studios website, that I always kind of have my eye on to go, you know, what is coming out? When do I need to be close to my computer to be able to order something? But fortunately, the Tarot of Prague, which I had gotten years ago, is one that they have re-released in a few different formats, a larger format, and that's what we are going to open today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into this. And this deck also has a really fantastic book that accompanies it. And I'll just go ahead and show that to you guys. So this is the original Tarot of Prague book. You can, as you can see, there's a lot of information here. This says first edition limited to only 3,000 sets of deck and book. So you can get the idea there. And let me just read for you this little excerpt where they speak about Prague. Magic Prague, city of Art Nouveau and Deco, the Baroque and the Enlightenment, yet also a place of Gothic enchantment, alchemists and phantoms, the fantastic and fantastical. Ever since the reign of Emperor Rudolf II, who filled Prague Castle with curiosities and wonders, as well as a succession of practitioners of astrology, astronomy, and alchemy, Prague has been known as a city steeped in art, esoterica, and the occult. The surrealist André Breton called it the Magic City, and this name feels as true today as ever. It's the home to Rabbi Lowe, who is the famous Kabbalist and creator of the legendary Gollum, and I actually pulled out this photo. This is me in 2005, standing next to Rabbi Lowe's grave there with a kind of a smug look on my face. And this is actually a statue of Rabbi Lowe. 
So back when we still took photos on film and printed them out. Now, this is also a deck that I actually do use occasionally for clients. So I've shared with you guys that it is very rare that I change up the deck that I read with. And then there's some decks that it's just so easy to just jump in and start reading with them. And that's what I found to be true of this deck. Uh, it really lends itself to the classical interpretations as I use them stemming from the Rider Waite tradition. And so even though it's got its own imagery, I just didn't need to sit with it for a long time. I was just able to start working with this deck right away. And I really felt that it was very, very effective in, for doing readings for clients. Have you guys ever been to Prague? It is the probably the most highly recommended place that I can think of, of anywhere that I've been. If you have a chance when you're in Europe to go there, definitely do. Check out the old city. Um, one time that I was there, the last time I was there over Halloween, and it just added this whole other layer of mystery at night. In the fall, the city's very foggy and just... The only thing that I can even compare it to in the U.S. would be like the uh, French Quarter in New Orleans. Just that sense of a lot of spirits roaming around and just a lot of magic. Now already I can see that there is a pretty major difference between the packaging of this deck and the old version that I had because the old deck it came kind of like in a book with little ties and so this has a box but the other one was kind of loose and it just had like a folding around almost like a book cover and this says tarot deck based on the art and architecture of the magic city and I don't think that the first time that I got this deck I actually got it brand new I'm pretty sure that I had gotten it as a used deck and one of the cool things about this re-release is is that it has cold stamping on it of metallic so they've added uh, metallic details to all of the cards where they kind of choose little parts and uh, it's just gonna add so much. I can see it already. Oh, so cool. I hope that it reads on camera. So it's a collage deck, and it's just taken from all kinds of scenes all over the town. They've collaged together statues and artwork, and there's so much here, so many details. So of course we see this image of the magician, but then also in the background, you can see that there is a, uh, a depiction here of Hermes. Can you see the caduceus right behind the wand and the little winged helmet? And so they put all these different pieces together and it just creates such a visually stunning deck. There's the Empress. And then the book outlines, I think you can see there, kind of the metallic aspect that is in the crown and the little ornament here in the globe. Can you guys see that there's like a shimmer to that? Very cool, right? There's Rabbi Lowe. You can recognize him by the shape of his hat there, the hero font. And I just love this beautiful angel here over the lovers and the book outlines uh, where all of the imagery comes from and so it tells you this part was from this here we have uh, Muka drawing right and here we have alchemists row where the alchemists live brought by Rudolf the second in the 1500s when he was reigning over that city and uh, he was only 24 when he became king. Now this is interesting. So this is the Wheel of Fortune. And this is the face of the famous Prague astrological clock right in the middle of the old square of the city. And there's actually a video that has a video mapping. I don't remember what the celebration was, of, but they had like a sound and light display. And video mapping is like 3D projection. And they did it over the top of the clock tower. If I can find that video link, I'll leave it down below because it's really, really cool. 
but I'm so excited about these because it was really worth getting a second copy to have just that beautiful gilding. I mean, I don't know that I'd call it gilding. Like I said, the, they call the process cold stamping. So it's different than just having like a solid gold area. It just is makes it feel very illuminated. There's the hanged man. Now the deck that I had originally, see here you can see that the metallic parts are this blue color. It had two different death cards. So I'm not sure if this one will have two. Let's look at the very end here. Oh, it does. And they're different actually. So here is an alternative death card. This is different from the alternative death card that I got in the first deck. And it also has an alternative sun. So right off the bat, I am really feeling this. Maybe it's just because the richness of the colors there. And you can see all of these faces here. They're all skulls. And I do kind of associate skulls also with the Czech Republic because um, that's where Kutnahora is, also the Bone Chapel, another place that I was able to go the first time that I was there. That's a very well-known place. There is a website and a, um, I think that they have an app as well that I definitely always use whenever I'm traveling. And it's called Atlas Obscura. Do you guys ever use that? This is going to be a great tip if you've never gone on their website. Basically what you do is you put in any place that you're going and I think it can even like if you do it on your phone it will look at your location and then it will give you all of the occult things that are in the area for you to go to look at and it takes you off the beaten path. So if you're looking for an alternative esoteric tour guide, check out Atlas Obscura and you'll find things that you're not necessarily going to find in Lonely Planet or on TripAdvisor. So I used that whenever I was in Venice and Florence when I went across Italy and um, you can definitely, it can lead you to some places that might be unexpected. What a cool world. And one thing that Baba Studios does is when they do re-release decks, they change some of the cards. So they don't just reprint, they update things. I've always loved this two of wands. Let's see what this is from here. So in the book we get an interpretation, but it's the source of where the images came from that I find the most interesting. The woman with the globe that we see in the background is part of a very lavish monochrome decoration from an early 19th century building in Vodikova Street. The whole facade is covered in paintings of the classical skills and virtues. The young cherub holding the two leafy branches is from a 19th century wall painting at Senovazny Namaste in Prague. Um, Namaste is the, I don't know if that's how it sounds in Czech, but that's just the name for street there. And let me show you the back of these. Even the backs have this beautiful metallic effect. So it's almost as if now compared to the version that I used to have, I don't have it here because it's actually at work, but these just feel alive where it feels like that other version is a little bit flat. Now this is the three of wands there. Aren't these just gorgeous? Their decks are just so amazing. They're a little bit more expensive and they're worth every single penny. They are truly works of art. They're put out, they're a nice size. They're a beautiful cardstock. They feel amazing. Everything about them is just the best quality. Here we see statues. And there we see the Vadlava River in the background. And you cross over the bridge to get into the old city. Here's the Eight of Wands. See how this is not a, a huge departure from Rider Waite Smith. Even in the Seven, we see this guy up above and the wands down below. And I think that's why it's so easy for me to just go ahead and jump right in. You can definitely recognize which card you're working with. Now, this is interesting. We see here this marionette. And this was also something I noticed the last time I was in Prague, that everywhere you turned, there seemed to be uh, like a... A marionette store. Apparently puppetry, the creation of marionettes, has a, quite a lot of history there. I think that this is a, this may be a 
new card. I don't recognize this, although some of them just look different for having the cold stamping. But again, we see another part of the astronomical clock there, which is so cool. It turns and it shows where all of the planets are and not just the time. And then upon the hour, it has the little figures that come out. And, you know, it's very reminiscent of um, It's a Small World that has the big clock on the front and has the little figures come out. And from what I, I don't remember where I heard this, but apparently Walt Disney had traveled to Prague and used the, there's the red lion of alchemy, had used um, inspiration from Prague Castle, this big dark gothic castle uh, when he was creating the design for um, Snow White's castle. There we see a beautiful Three of Cups. Just love that. Kind of like the three fates there. Statue for the Five of Cups. The famous occultists John Dee and Edward Kelly spent some time in Prague. And John Dee as an advisor for a time to King Rudolph. And while Kelly was his scribe and assistant to a certain degree, uh, he was also an alchemist in his own right, although there's uh, some skepticism as far as uh, w if what he was doing was real or kind of an illusion. Now, th this is what have been always been one of my favorite cards, the Knight of Cups. Look at this, riding on the upside down horse. Whenever this card comes up for anybody in a reading, they're always just like, whoa, wow, what is this? Just over the top of the city. Yeah, I think that's such a good one. And I love her too, the Queen of Cups, again with the river in the background. There's a beautiful Ace of Swords, just as the sun is going down over the city. And again, we see the little lion there. I just can't wait. It's been a long time, actually, since I've read with this deck. It's it's just something that I had and I used for a while. And then I just kind of had put it aside and um, it just really feels like it's time for me to bring it back. I've always loved this too. And we can see this very recognizable silhouette over the city. I'm not remembering off the top of my head. I don't know that this is Prague Castle, although it might be, but it's just one of those things that stands out. I guess we can look in the book and see. I, I think that's a different building though. The woman with her eyes bound is from a statue at the main post office. The swords themselves are based on those made by an armory shop in Prague. The bear is from the door sign of a Baroque house on Mosteca Street. And the background is a night view of Old Town from the end of the Charles Bridge. So the Charles Bridge is the main bridge connecting the new town to the Old Town. And it, yeah, it, it might be that this is just the, I see it now, the little passageway that you walk to. So this might just be the end of the bridge there. Here we can see the spires of the cathedral in the background. And the page of swords looking out over the city. There's the knight. They just, even though they're collage, don't they kind of look like oil paintings a little bit? so beautiful. This was always a favorite too. The Ace of Pentacles. And I always just feel like I remember walking up these stairways and across these little areas. So there's just so much familiarity and it's just a place that I don't know if I lived some past lives there or what it was, but I definitely just feel right at home whenever I'm in Prague. And this image is actually a photograph that was taken during a snowstorm just before Christmas of the entrance of the church at Namaste Miru. And the woman and child are a detail from a statue of St. Ivo on Charles Bridge. So all along the bridge, which is very, very wide and cars don't drive over it, um, you have these just amazing, gothic, beautiful statues. And there's also a lot of um, like street performers and musicians and artists that are all along that bridge as well. So again, you can see 
a similarity to the classical imagery that you might recognize. This guy kind of leaning here, looking at this tree of pentacles. There we see the eight. And the nine of pentacles. She has the beehive above, above her head. Bees being a, definitely a symbol of for prosperity and abundance. I know sometimes people are very afraid of bees, but actually I consider them a good lucky sign when I when I do see bees, as long as they're like honeybees and not you know hornets or wasps. And here we see the court cards. There's so many fascinating museums and all of the old Jewish museums are there. I've done a lot of exploration and poking around in there. And here we see Prague Castle. So those are the recognizable Gothic spires. At least I'm pretty sure that is. And uh, there we see the King and Queen of Pentacles. So such a beautiful deck. I hope you guys have enjoyed taking a look at it. I just adore this tarot company and they have outdone themselves with this recreation and reimagination of this deck which was already beautiful to begin with and now that they've added the metallic detailing it's just even more beautiful and I just know that this will be a deck that I will continue to read with and really love for a long time. So we are going to go ahead and pull a single card. What should our question be today? Hmm. I feel like we need to go deep. You know, I mentioned sort of the fact that maybe I was a bohemian in my past life. Maybe you have a little bit of blood. Maybe 23andMe could tell me <laughs> where my Czech ancestry lies. Let's ask a question about taking a look at something that has come down to us through our lineage. So this could be one of two things. It could either be that we get a message that is a difficult message that tells us something that we have an opportunity to heal in our lineage, or it could tell us of something that is a gift that's been passed down to us through our lineage that maybe hasn't been completely awoken yet. Okay, that feels good. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And here is our message. All right, the lovers. Let's go ahead and look up where this came from. This is a figure of Adam and Eve together with a stag from the facade of the House of the Minute in Old Town Square. The angel comes from the cloisters of the Vasharad Cemetery. Striking because of its Art Deco Egyptian style, Egyptian motifs were very popular in the Art Deco period. And uh, I've also worn something else today this area is, is well known for, and that is their glass. If you guys have ever heard of Czech glass and kind of old vintage jewelry, and this has the Egyptian motif, the uh, King Tut on there. So the lovers, a gift or something to be healed from our lineage. Now, even though this is typically, you know, a beautiful card and something that we might think of as a positive, I'm actually getting the feeling like this is landing, at least for me, more on the side of something to be healed through my lineage as opposed to something that's necessarily a gift to be passed down, but maybe a little bit of both. So I'll leave that up for your interpretation to see how this concept of the lovers, which is the duality, you know, this corresponds to Gemini, the twins. So it's the polarity of two different viewpoints which come together and balance each other. And I also like to call sometimes the men are from Mars, women are from Venus card, because ultimately it's not about two people that see eye to eye. It's about two people that have very different visions, but who can recognize that it's not that one is right and the, the other is wrong, but that there's value in having opposing viewpoints and that coming together, those two things can become part of a greater whole. So you can interpret the rest of the way how this speaks to you and your particular history and lineage, whether that is of your past lives or of your ancestry. So I thank you guys so much for being here with me to take a look at the Tarot of Prague. I also want to mention that the book has also been re-released. I think I said that, but it's, it's been um, updated as well. As always, I'll leave all of the links down below. 
I appreciate you guys to the end of the world for being here with me on this journey. I've just learned so much and I can't believe we're approaching the end, but there's so much more that's going to come out of it. So I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.